Welcome back to Capitol tonight on Friday. President Biden apologized to Native Americans for the systemic physical and sexual abuse of generations of indigenous children in government run boarding schools. For 150 years, the U.S. removed indigenous children from their homes and sent them away to schools where they were stripped of their cultures, histories and religions and beaten for speaking their languages. Biden told a crowd of indigenous people outside of Phoenix that it was one of the most horrific chapters in American history. Joining us with reaction is businessman J.C. Seneca, a longtime indigenous leader and a candidate for president of the Seneca Nation this year. Welcome back to Capitol tonight. It's good to see you. Hey, it's good to be back. Uh, thanks. How do you feel about Biden's apology? Well, I think it's uh, it's a good step in the right direction in regards to the U.S. government. Um, finally uh, coming forward and taking responsibility and making an apology uh, to our people. Uh, but uh, certainly there's more that has to be done about that. All right, we're gonna come back to uh, what more you think needs to be done. But I wanted to point out that you are one of the people who helped inform this apology by providing the interior secretary with a report on the establishment of missionary schools, which was, uh, and there was one on the Cattaraugus Indian Reservation in Erie County uh, in New York State between 1875 and it shut in 1957. What happened there? Well, you know, uh, certainly uh, when the investigation started by Secretary Holland, uh, it was focused on federal government um, in regards to uh, their funding of these boarding schools where the one in the, the Cattaraugus Territory on Seneca Nation was uh, state run. And so it was a little different. So it wasn't really into the, um, I guess, they weren't really looking at that. And so we reached out to the secretary and the undersecretary uh, in regards to um, making sure that they were aware of this and that they looked into it. And they did. You know, they asked us to compile information. And so we, um, uh, there's so, still folks uh, that are alive today that had uh, wow. been at the Thomas Indian School. And so we brought them together, compiled information, and also uh, prepared that and presented it to the secretary and the Department of Interior. So you, you mentioned that there are survivors of what, what was called the Thomas Indian School in Cattaraugus County or on the Cattaraugus Correct. Reservation, I should say. Can you share any stories from that time that, that any of these survivors may have shared with you? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, it started out as a missionary school and uh, the state took it over in 1875 and they operated it as a basically boarding school until 1957. And so uh, some of the folks that have been there, my father actually uh, was at the Thomas Indian School back when he was uh, a youngster. Wow. And so, you know, I'm a, I'm a first generation post boarding school. So we always talk about intergenerational trauma and the effects of that it had on those people that went there. And so, yeah, a lot of the abuse, they were uh, physically abused, mentally abused, sexually abused, and, uh, you know, faced uh, a lot of hardships if they spoke their language. Uh, they couldn't dress uh, as they normally would have as a native uh, person. Uh, they couldn't, you know, do a lot of things. And uh, although, you know, a lot of... Uh, you know, the, a lot of the men, uh, of course, were uh, working in the farm and things like that. The women were assigned to more, um, you know, tasks in the in the household, trying to teach them, uh, uh, I guess, the, uh, the way of life of uh, the, the non-native people, to say it in a, in a correct manner in today's world, I guess, uh, to, um, you know, so a lot of those things were happening and uh, they were taken from their homes uh, the parents lost their parental rights, and so they really couldn't see their children. They couldn't um, have access to them, communicate with them, and, and so it was it was very difficult. If you could imagine being a child and being taken from your home, and not being able to talk to your parents or communicate with them, you know, it's just a, a very traumatic experience. Yeah. And you know, a lot of them tried to escape from the, the schools, but they were caught, brought back to the school, and. Uh, and, you know, the Thomas Indian School facilitated uh, many different territories. So there were people probably from the other Haudenosaunee territories that were also brought here sure. and, and from the region. You know, and, and even at the federal level of boarding schools, the Carlisle Indian School, my grandmother was taken from her home when she was 11 years old and placed in that school. 
you know, it's a part of history. It's a chapter in, in our history that not a lot of uh, people know about, not a lot of non-Indigenous people know about. Um, right. But you're saying that the apology, while a step forward from the president, is is good. It's, it's just uh, the government is actually still traumatizing Native Americans. Can you explain how? Yeah. Well, you know, I think the apology is good and the timing of it, you know, really, if there wasn't an election going on uh, and where they needed voters to come out, native voters to uh, come out, as they had mentioned, you know, maybe they would never have apologized. I don't know, you know, but uh, I'm glad that he did. And, uh, you know, they're looking for uh, all the votes that they can get. And the native is a, the native vote is a, a part of that uh, voting uh, sector that they're looking to capture. So really, so you're looking at you're doing? looking at the apology through sort of a scrim of um, a scrim of cynicism, which is completely understandable. Uh, yeah. Do you think that he meant the apology? I think so. I think he meant it, but you know, timing-wise, why is it uh, why a now? week or so before the election? Right. You know, and when it should have been maybe when he first took office. Right. You know, or whatever. You know, or he had they, the White House always has uh, different um, uh, Native American meetings where he invites leadership into Washington. You know, Obama did it and, uh, you know, continued on uh, now and under Biden. But, you know, those are kind of skeptical, uh, you know, looks, uh, views at it, I guess. But I'm glad he did it. I think, uh, you know, more needs to be done. Investigations need to be concluded. Uh, you know, Secretary Holland did everything that she possibly could within the time frame of what she was working with. And I'm sure that there's a lot of questions and things that she continued would like to continue to um, be done on the issue uh, in regards sure. to the many native uh, boarding schools across the country. So we only have seconds, J.C. Seneca, but here in New York, the Senecas and the state are still negotiating a new gaming compact. What would you like to say to Governor Hochul? Well, certainly I'd like to, the governor, the leadership needs to sit down. They need to uh, get this uh, compact negotiated and completed. I think, uh, you know, the leadership of New York State, leadership of our nation, the Seneca Nation, need to be at the table, uh, need to be able to get this done in, uh, you know, in quick fashion. Uh, you know, there's a lot of issues out there. The negotiating has been going on for two years. They've been dragging their feet. You know, uh, there's a lot of factors that have uh, happened. Time to put it to bed. Time period. Yeah, it's time, it's time to Got uh, it. do, the, do the right thing, right? We have been speaking with businessman J.C. Seneca. He's a, Senate, a candidate this year for president of the Seneca Nation, and that election takes place on November 5th. J.C. Seneca, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Let Spectrum News be your resource for balanced, in-depth political coverage. And click the subscribe button here. You can also download our app and watch us on TV to learn more about the candidates, where they stand on the issues, and more. We'll see you then.